Suppose 248 subjects are treated with a drug test that is used to treat pain, and 55 of them develop nausea. Use a 0.01 significance level to test the claim that more than 20% of users develop nausea. So let's go ahead and open this up here. So let's first identify the claim of this problem. So the claim is, is that we're testing the claim that more than 20% of the users develop nausea. Okay, so now we need to identify the given information. Now it says to use a p-value method or critical value method. Well, that depends on the question. If it's asking us for the p-value, then we're going to go the p-value route. If it asks for the critical value method, then we're going to go the critical value method. Now the first thing we need to identify is what is the sample size? Well, the sample size is the 248 subjects that were treated. Okay, now what is the point estimate? Well, the point estimate is on depending upon the sample. Well, it says that 55 of them develop nausea. So that means that it's going to be 55 over 248. Okay, now what is the population proportion? Well, that is the claim. So the claim is that more than 20% of the users develop nausea but that claim would then be for the null hypothesis, P would equal 0 0.20, and then Q would be the complement of that. So 1 minus 0 0.20 is equal to 0 0.80. So therefore, these are the given information. Now, what are the requirements? Well, we know that 248 subjects were randomly selected. We know that there is a fixed number, 248 of independent trials. And then the requirements is that we take n times p and then n times q to make sure that they are greater than or equal to 5. Well, n is 248 times p is 0 0.20 is 49.6. That's greater than or equal to 5. And then 248 times q, which is 0.80, gives us 198.4. And that is also greater than or equal to 5. Therefore, all three requirements are satisfied. Okay, so now let's state the claim and the opposite of the claim. Well, here the claim says that it's more than 20%. So the claim is that the population proportion is greater than 0 0.20. And therefore, the opposite of the claim would be that the population proportion is less than or equal to 0 0.20. Okay, now let's use this information to then identify the null in the alternative hypothesis. Okay, so we have our null hypothesis and we have the alternative hypothesis and the null always contains the equality. So which one of these contains the equality? Well the opposite contains the equality and therefore P is going to equal 0 0.20 and now the claim is going to be with the alternative hypothesis, so therefore P is greater than 0 0.20. Now we can go ahead and then answer our first question, identifying the null and the alternative hypothesis. Well, the null is equal to 0 0.20, and the alternative is greater than, which is the claim. So we're going to go ahead and select D, and there is our result. Okay, now we need to identify the test statistic for the hypothesis test and then round it to two decimal places. But before we do that, let's continue to follow the steps here. Now we're using the alternative hypothesis to determine whether it's a left, right, or two-tailed distribution. Well, since the alternative has a greater than sign, that means that this is a right-tailed test. Okay, now what is the significance level? Well, the significance level that's given in the problem is 0.01. So therefore, we know that alpha is equal to 0 0.01. Now that we have that information, let's go ahead and then determine what the test statistic is for a claim about a proper proportion. And then here's our formula. So we know that the sample size is 248. We know that the point estimate, which is the sample, is 55 out of the 248. Now you can either write this as a decimal or leave it as a fraction. My suggestion is just leave it as a fraction and then plug it into the formula. 
And then we know that the population proportion is equal to 0 0.20 and Q is 0 0.80. So now let's plug it into the formula. So we have 55 over 248 minus P, which is 0 0.20. And then we're going to divide it by the square root of P, which is 0 0.20, times Q, which is 0 0.80, over N, which is 248. And then we're going to round that to two decimal places. So let's go ahead and plug this into our calculator. So in parentheses, we have the fraction 55 divided by 248. And then we're going to subtract 0 0.20. And that gives us our numerator. And now we're going to divide that by the square root of, in parentheses, we have 0 0.20 times 0 0.80, close the parentheses, and then divide that by 248, and then press Enter. And then there is our test statistic. So let's go ahead and copy that and then round that to two decimal places. Okay, so rounding that to two decimal places, we get a test statistic of 0 0.86. So let's go ahead and put that in here, 0 0.86, and there is our answer. Now we need to identify the p-value, so therefore we're going to use the p-value method for this problem. So to use the p-value method, we want to first draw and label our curve. Okay, so there's our bell curve. Now it's saying that our claim is that it is more than the value of the, S, uh, the, the test statistic, which is 0 0.86. So 0 0.86 is to the right of this graph. And we know it's a right tail. So we're looking for the p-value here. So the p-value is that we're taking the probability of that test statistic, which is z being greater than or equal to the test statistic of 0.86. We want to determine what is the p-value rounded to three decimal places. So to find the p-value, we're going to go ahead and open up StatCrunch. Okay, now since the test statistic is Z, that means that we're using the normal calculator. So we're going to go to calculators, go down to normal. Okay, we want to make sure the, equal, the inequality is going to be greater than or equal to. We're going to put in our test statistic of 0 0.86. And now we get our p-value here. And we're going to round that to three decimal places, which is 0 0.195. Now let's go ahead and put that into our question. 0 0.195 and there is our p-value. Now we need to identify the conclusion. Okay, so we're making a decision so we have to compare the p-value with the significance level. So we know that the p-value is 0 0.195 and we know that the significance level given in the problem was 0 0.01 so therefore it's greater than. Now if it's less than or equal to, we reject the null hypothesis. If it's greater than the significance level, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now, in order to complete the conclusion, we have to come back and take a look at what the claim is. Well, the claim has the inequality greater than. It does not contain the equality. So when we look at our four possibilities of our conclusion, the two that says includes the equality, we are going to eliminate. Okay, now we know that the original claim does not include an equality, but now we have to decide, well, we know that we failed to reject the null, so we're going to eliminate the first one, and therefore it's going to be this conclusion here. So now we answer our questions. We know we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. And this one says there is sufficient evidence, and this one says there is not sufficient evidence. So it's going to be D. 
Now, you see here it says there is not sufficient to warrant support. Okay, that doesn't say warrant rejection. So warrant rejection would then be uh, associated with this. This is saying warrant support. So therefore, our answer is D. Check our answer, and there is our result.